Hello viewers, this Dow Too Fast here. In today's video, I'll be reviewing this AutoVox V5 Pro rearview mirror dash cam. Now the unique thing about this design is it does not use rubber straps for mounting. Instead, it has a dedicated metal mirror bracket that you install on the windshield. Now the LCD display you see here is 9.35 inch wide. This dash cam has a front and rear camera that records in 1080p. It features super night vision, GPS tracking, and they've included a hardwired power cable into the fuse box for parking mode recording. In this video, I'll go over all the features and how to install this in your vehicle. So stay tuned. Let me show you the unboxing of this AutoVox V5 Pro dash cam. User manual. And here's a rear view mirror dash cam. Rear camera. GPS antenna. License plate mounting bracket for the rear camera. Rear camera cable. Hardwire power cable and fuse taps. Additional hardware for mounting the mirror. Here's a look at everything that comes with this dash cam. So let's have a look at this rear view mirror dash cam. Looking on the front, this is a 9.35 inch full laminated LCD touchscreen. There's a protective film you need to remove. And let's have a look at the back. Right here is the front camera. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and the viewing angle is 145 degrees. You can swivel this camera to adjust the view. The speakers are placed right here. In the middle is a rear view mirror bracket. This bracket is made of all metal and you can adjust the angle. Later in the video, I'll talk more about the different bracket adapters that come with this unit. In the middle, there's this wire that comes out. This connects to the main wiring harness, which connects to the power wire, GPS antenna, and rear view mirror cable. Looking at the bottom, Right here is a plastic cover you can open up. There's a recess switch. Next to it is a mini USB connector for connecting to your PC. Right here is a micro SD memory card slot. Now this dash cam supports up to a maximum of 64 gigabyte memory size. The memory card is not included, so you do have to provide your own. Here I'll install a memory card. Let's go over the wiring for this dash cam. This is the main wiring harness. On this end, with this connector, you connect it to the rear view mirror. On the other end, you have these three wires for power. Now this part of the hardware kit that's included, so you need to connect this to your fuse box. The yellow wire is constant 12 volt, red wire is ignition 12 volt, and the black wire is chassis ground. They've included two fuse tabs to connect to these wires. Now one thing to keep in mind is there are different style of fuses. This one here is a low profile mini, and many modern day cars do use this type of fuse. But depending on the vehicle you have, other types are ATO, Micro 2, and Normal Mini. If your vehicle does use a different type than the one here, you can buy other types of fuse tabs on Amazon. Out of this main wiring harness, you also have two more wires. This one here with this connector is for connecting the GPS antenna. Plug this into this connector. With this cable, you connect this to the rear camera cable. On the other end of the rear camera cable, you have this connector and this red wire. With this connector, you connect the rear camera. The resolution on this camera is full HD 1920 by 1080 and the viewing angle is 150 degrees. Now with this backup camera, it's waterproof so you can install this outside or inside your vehicle. But if you want to install this outside the vehicle right above the license plate, you can swap this bracket with this one right here. And with this red wire, you have the option to connect this to the backup light. When you do that and you put the car in reverse, the view of the LCD will switch to a backup view and you'll also see parking guidelines. One thing I want to point out is if you look at the thickness of the cable on the main wiring harness and also the rear view cable, these cables are quite thick, which can make install a little bit more difficult if you're tucking it behind the headliner. They've included several other bracket adapters you can use to install this mirror onto your vehicle. So for example, this one here is commonly used on Honda and Subaru vehicles. What you want to do is slide this side onto the bracket and then install this side onto the base that's on the windshield. 
This one here in the middle is commonly found on Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Volvo, and BMW vehicles. And this last one here is a bracket adapter for Audi and Volkswagen vehicles. If you refer to the user manual, they have information on how to install the bracket adapter. Here I'm going to power up the dash cam. Once it's powered on, the recording will begin automatically. That's indicated by the red dot right here. Now if you tap the screen, a menu will come up at the bottom here. If you want to mute the microphone, you can press this icon right here. This next icon here will allow you to change the camera view. So right now you're looking at the rear camera. If I press this, now it's a split screen. The left side is a rear camera and the right side is a front camera. Press it again. Now we're looking at the front camera. Now we're back to a rear camera. This next icon is playback. To go into playback, you need to stop the recording. Here you see different folders for the recording. You have normal, emergency video, and photo. In the normal folder, you have front files and rear files. You can select a different recording and playback. The left side is a rear camera. This icon here is to take a photo. And this lock icon will allow you to lock this video clip. So let's say if you're driving along and you see something happening on the road, you can use this function to lock this video clip and save it for later viewing. Now to go into settings, you do have to stop the recording first. Then go into settings. There are two tabs here, movie mode and general settings. Under movie mode, you have resolution. You can set the front camera for 1080p or 720p. Movie clip time, this is loop recording. By default, it's one minute. You can set it for one, three, or five minutes. Now the dash cam will record both front and rear continuously while you're driving. And it records a series of one minute, three minute, or five minute video clips until the memory card is full. And then it'll start overwriting the oldest file. I'm gonna set this for three minutes. Next is sound record. This is for enabling or disabling the microphone. Next one is a reverse line switch. There's a backup parking guideline. You can turn this on or off. Next one is driving mode. By default it's off. Now if you enable this, the LCD display will default to a speed and compass view instead of a live video view. And the last one here is parking monitor. By default it's off. You can set this for off, high, middle, or low. There's a sensitivity for the impact detection on the dash cam. If you enable this when the vehicle is parked, the dash cam will monitor any impact to the vehicle. If there is an impact detected, the dash cam will record a short video clip. I'm going to leave this off for now, but I will demonstrate it to you later. Next, let's go over to the general settings. Beep sound, by default is on. The volume, you can turn this off or set it to high, middle, or low. Language, here you can select different languages. LCD power save, there's a screensaver setting, by default is off. You can set it for one minute or three minute. So what this will do is automatically turn off the LCD after one minute or three minutes. Protect level. By default middle. You can set it for off, high, middle, or low. This is a dash cam's G sensor. While you're driving, if it detects an impact to the vehicle, it will automatically lock that video clip and prevent it from being overwritten. Speed unit. You can set it for kilometers per hour or miles per hour. I'll set this one to miles per hour. GPS time sync is enabled. This will set the clock for you automatically. Time zone. Here you can set the GMT time zone for your location. Clock setting. You can also manually set the date and time. Day format. Time format. You can set it for 12 hours or 24 hours. Automatic rear view. If you enable this, then every time you start up, it will automatically default the LCD display to the rear view. Reset setup will reset the unit back to factory default. Format SD card. Here you can format the memory card. And the last item here is firmware version. This is a software version. When you're done, go back. Now this mirror does have automatic brightness adjust. At the top you see this icon with an A in the middle. That's automatic brightness. You can manually set this if you want. While looking at this view, if you want to turn off the day and time, you can. Just tap the clock here. To see it again, tap it again. With both the front and rear camera view, you can change the viewing angle. All you have to do is swipe up and down. If you want to change the LCD display to show the driving mode, where it shows you speed and compass, all you have to do is press and hold the screen for two seconds. 
To turn off the LCD completely, press and hold again for two seconds. Tap the screen to turn it back on. While looking at the rear view, if you swipe right, you turn on the parking guidelines. Now to make these parking guidelines more useful, you can actually manually set the location of these guidelines. You can adjust the red line and the green line. To adjust it, just tap and hold. And you move this. Same thing for the green line. What you want to do is install the system into your vehicle. And while looking at the back view, set up several objects at different distances and then calibrate accordingly. Let's take this to the vehicle, get it installed, and we'll check out all the features on this rear view mirror dash cam and also take a look at the daytime and nighttime recording. To remove the factory mirror on this Nissan vehicle, first loosen the set screw here. Now slide the mirror up and it'll come out. Now the bracket that's on this rear view mirror dash cam is already made for the Nissan vehicle. So all I have to do is slide this onto the base and then tighten the bottom Phillips screw. Connect the main wiring harness to the cable on the mirror. Now bring this cable up to the headliner. Tuck this cable behind the headliner and run this cable over to the A-pillar. Now the length of this main wiring harness cable is eight feet long. Now since the three power wires and the GPS cable and the rear view camera cable all come out of this splitter, you'll first need to run this cable all the way to the fuse box so you're able to connect these three wires. After you do that, then connect the GPS antenna and run it back up to the windshield and you also need to connect the rear camera cable and run that cable to the back of the vehicle. Pull back on the weather stripping and then remove the cover on the A-pillar. Run the cable along the side behind the panel and keep the cable away from the side curtain airbag. Bring the cable all the way down and then run the three power wires to the fuse box. Connect the GPS antenna. Now the cable on the GPS antenna is six feet long. So that'll give you enough length to run it back up to the windshield. Here I ran the GPS antenna back up the A-pillar. Use a double side tape on the back and then stick this into the corner of the windshield. Connect the rear camera cable. And this cable is 19 feet long. You can run this cable either along the bottom side or along the top. Here's a rear camera cable. Tuck it behind the weather stripping and run this all the way to the back. Use the included fuse taps to tap into the fuse box. You'll need one for ignition 12 volt and one for constant 12 volt. Now make sure you don't tap into any circuits that are critical, like ABS or airbags. A good reference to use is a label for the fuse box. So for example, up top here, there's a power socket accessory one that will give you ignition 12 volt. And the electrical parts bat two, this will give you constant 12 volt. It's best to test it with a multimeter so you know which one's ignition 12 volt and which one's constant 12 volt. Let me go over how you use a fuse tap. So the bottom slot is empty right now. What you'll do is remove the fuse from the fuse panel and then plug it into the bottom slot so that retain the factory circuit. The top fuse you see here is for the accessory. So in this case, it will provide power for the dash cam. Voltage will come in on the left side here, go through the fuse, and come out on the right side, going to your dash cam. For the bottom fuse, the voltage will come in on the left side, go through the fuse, and come back out on the right side. So when you plug this fuse tap into the fuse box, make sure the voltage is coming in on this side, and then going out on this side. Go ahead and plug the fuse tap into the fuse panel. Here's a look with the fuse taps installed. The top one is ignition 12 volt, and the bottom one here is constant 12 volt. Now I can close this up. Now the last connection you need to make is this ground wire. I'll connect this to a bolt that's right behind the hood release. This rear camera is waterproof, so you can install this outside the vehicle or inside the vehicle. If you choose to install this outside the vehicle, you can use this bracket that comes with the dash cam. What you want to do is remove this bracket, install this one onto the camera, and then you mount this bracket behind the license plate. So the camera will be placed above the license plate. Now if you want to install it this way, you do have to run the wire into the back hatch, which makes the installation more involved. For this install, I'll install the camera on the back hatch. Here's the cable I ran all the way to the back. Tuck this cable behind this molding. Connect the camera to the rear camera cable. Tuck the extra cable behind the headliner. Here's what the installed camera looked like. With the red wire, if you connect this to the backup light, when you put the car in reverse, the LCD will automatically switch to the backup view with parking guidelines. Turn on the ignition. Once the dash cam power on, the recording will start automatically. Right now you're looking at the rear view. I can swipe up and down to change the viewing angle. I can press this button to toggle the view. 
There's a split view with a rear view on the left side and the front view on the right side. Here's the front view. Now we're back to the rear view. If I swipe right, it'll switch to the back of view with the parking guidelines. I can also adjust the viewing angle on here. You can also reposition these lines. Swipe to the right to go back to a regular view. With that red wire connected, when I put the car in reverse, the LCD will automatically switch to the back of view. If you tap and hold the screen, you'll switch to the driving mode display. This will show you the speed you're traveling at and the direction of travel. Press and hold the screen again. And now the display will turn off. Tap the screen and it'll turn on the driving mode display. Tap it again, it'll go back to regular view. Now this LCD display does have a pretty good anti-glare surface, but if you find there's still too much glare on a super sunny day, you can turn off the LCD and use the mirror as a regular rear view mirror. Let me show you how the parking mode work. Let's first stop the recording. Go into settings. Go to parking monitor. Let's enable this. Set to high. Go back. Now I'm gonna turn off the ignition. The dash cam will turn off and go into standby mode. At this time, if it detects any impact, the dash cam will automatically turn on and record a short video clip. I'll simulate an impact by hitting the A pillar. As you can see, the dash cam will turn on and begin recording. After the recording, the dash cam will turn off and go back into standby mode. One thing I notice about the parking mode recording is if you get into your vehicle and the parking mode recording is taking place and you proceed to start your car, after this short recording, the dash cam will still shut off. So what you want to do is tap the screen, go ahead and stop the parking mode recording, then at this time continue with the regular recording. Now one benefit of having this type of LCD rear view mirror is if you have stuff in your back cargo and it's blocking your view out the back window, this LCD rear view mirror will still show you a clear view of the back. It's very helpful if you're backing out of a driveway or out of a parking space. This dashcam has a PC viewer software called Auto Player Lights. 
You'll find a copy of this software on the microSD memory card. Install the software onto your PC. Open up the software and specify the location of the recorded file on the memory card. You'll be able to play back the recorded file using this software. The recorded video will be played back on the main screen. There's a map on the right side showing you the direction of travel. And the speed and compass reading will be shown in the bottom right hand corner. As you saw in the recorded video, this AutoVox V5 Pro dash cam performed very well. With the daytime recording, you're able to see details like license plates in front of you. It has good exposure, contrast, and white balance. Now because the front camera is located on the right side of the dash cam, when you install this in a left-hand drive vehicle, the rear view mirror is typically angled in such a way the front camera is positioned further back in the vehicle. That's why when you look at the recorded video, it's showing more of the top of the windshield and also the dash. I do like the fact this dash cam does not require the use of rubber straps to install on top of the existing rear view mirror. The built-in mirror bracket makes for a much cleaner install and it's also mounted very solid so you don't have any vibration. This also results in better impact sensing detection during parking mode. Now one thing I do wish they incorporate into this dash cam is a physical power button. With a physical button, it will allow you to turn off the LCD display very quickly instead of tapping and holding the LCD screen. Overall, this is a pretty good rear view mirror dash cam. If you're looking for one with a built-in integrated mounting bracket, this might be something you want to consider. If you want to know where you can pick one up, check out the link below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.